I have officially cut my Robin Hood portfolio from 20 something thousand to now 11,000. Don't worry, I will show you exactly what happened over there. So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for you to learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. This week I made more major changes to my portfolio and in this video you'll see exactly what I've done throughout the week, my portfolio, what it looks like, what dividends I'm getting, and let's get started. So this is my Robin Hood portfolio as you can see on the screen. I am currently at $11,592.87, down by $297.01, down by 2.5%. And by the week, I am down by $11,874.72, down by 50.6%. By one month, it is down by $11,251.23, down by 49.25%. By three months, I'm down by $9,625.43, down by 45.36%. Why does it keep changing? By one year, I'm down by $8,303.82, down by 41.74%. My all-time charts, I am down by $10,546.29, down by 47.63%. And sorry, the numbers are not completely accurate because this keeps changing because we're still actively in the market. The market's still open. And so you can see there's this huge decrease, but please do not worry because this is all pre-planned and soon enough you will see exactly why. The reason why is because I transferred a lot of these stocks into my M1 Finance portfolio and this is my goal because I really like using M1 Finance. I even put my Roth IRA with M1 Finance. I just really want to use M1 Finance more and it doesn't make sense for me to have a 20k portfolio with Robinhood, the platform that I like even more. So let's take a look at history. So over here you can see all the pending history in the past 30 days and you can see that I have a referral bonus from Priscilla, thank you Priscilla, and I got WPG with this. I have a limit sell order for CPRX because I just want to break even, don't want to deal with more stocks. Limit sell of Universal Holdings, also just want to sell it, don't want to deal with it. Stack industrial dividend, 48 cents for my one share or four shares. And then APLE, $2.70 for my 27 shares. CPRX, I sold this at a break even point and then also sold more. And I have some pending orders. And over here, I have pending dividend from Visa, from Boeing, from Pfizer, and from Microsoft. So these are my pending dividends and by far the largest one is from 3M and that is $39.69. The sweet, sweet feeling of getting dividend payments that can pay for not only your 90 cents iced coffee, but also your avocado toast, that's 90 cents. Wait, it's 20 cents iced coffee, right? 20 cents iced coffee, 90 cents avocado toast, and, and more. You can pay for multiple meals with $39.69. And so after we look at Robinhood, let's Take a look at M1 Finance where I parked all the like the 10 grand basically. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio currently for my passive income portfolio, which is the portfolio I use for taxable account. Investing is at $11,825.12. And it sounds like 180%, honestly, like Ugh. I, I really hope they fix it because this is just unreal, but currently it shows that I gained 180.6%. So yeah, that's my gains, biggest gains ever. And you can also see I'm up by $5,709.52. And over here you can see in passive income, I have all these different sectors. Currently I have a lot of consumer because from what I transferred from Robinhood, a lot of it are consumer, but I only set it to 9%. So you can see I'm definitely overfunded. And let's just take a look at what is inside here. So what is inside of here? I have Coca-Cola, I have Estee Lauder, I have Disney, I have Costco, I have Target, Target, I have Nike. So these are my consumer sectors or companies. And then within tech, this is underfunded, but these are my companies, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Visa, and Alteryx, which is up by 70. 76%. And next you can also see for telecom, I'm very overfunded because I have a lot of AT&T that I transferred from Robinhood. And then real estate, I'm underfunded because I did not transfer a lot from Robinhood. In hindsight, I should have transferred stocks from my Robinhood portfolio to my M1 Finance portfolio, but hindsight is always 2020. So yeah, wish I knew, wish I knew. So that is 
just a glimpse of my M1 Finance portfolio. Everything else is pretty much the same as my M1 Finance portfolio summary, which I uploaded on Wednesday, so you can check that video out if you're interested. But by far, M1 Finance is my favorite portfolio because I have a life. And okay, I know this might sound really weird that I'm stating that I have a life. I feel like normal people don't do this, but it's because I have a lot of things that I want to do in life. I want to read more, I want to explore more, I want to work more, I want to work on my YouTube channel, I want to work on my video editing. Like there are so many things that I want to work on that I can't simply spend all my precious time researching on different like 50 different stocks and like watching the movement of the company holdings every single day. I just can't simply do that. I don't have that kind of personality. And I feel like for a lot of people like me, nine to five employees who have like side hustles, who have busy lives, I feel like for a lot of us, it's very good for us to have a very automatic system when it comes to investing. And the good thing about M1 Finance is that it all automatically does the deposit for you. So for example, for my taxable account, I deposit $200 and that automatically gets allocated into my different pies according to my allocation. So for example, if let's say tech is underfunded, then my extra money or my future money will be allocated to tech. And this is how it works. And it also allows you to buy fractional shares. So one example that I like to bring up a lot is Tesla. So as you know, Tesla is currently in the 900s, but my average cost is 550 $2.90. Even though currently I don't have a full share of Tesla with my M1 Finance portfolio, I don't have that, but then I'm still able to buy it at a lower cost because I took advantage of this opportunity sooner. Before I had like all the funds to buy a full share of Tesla, I can buy fractional shares and then this can let me enter into a Tesla train or Tesla rocket ship, whatever you call that. But yeah, this is a really, really cool feature that I know Robinhood is pushing out, but we don't know the exact timeline for that. And then one additional thing is because of dividend reinvestment plan Drip Drip, my phone case, which you know I love. And for a dividend reinvestment plan, just think of it like interest. You know how when they say your interest in your bank account can roll into a bigger snowball? When it comes to dividends, when you get like a large percentage of dividend payout, that can also act like interest and grow into a bigger snowball. And now let's look at my Weeble portfolio, which is my third portfolio. So this is my Weeble portfolio. I have McDonald's, Bank of America, Nokia, AT&T, Tapestry, and Alteryx. And over here in my account summary, you can see my net account value is a nine $915.89. I'm up by 17.38% and this portfolio I created like very late of 2019, late of last year. And you can see I have two shares of AT&T up by 1.26%. I have 15 shares of Tapestry up by 16.24%. I have three shares of Nokia down by 3.7%. I have one share of McDonald's up by 5.97%. I have one share of Alteryx up by 68.21%. I have one share of Bank of America up by 12.31%. So as you can see, these are some excellent, excellent gains in my Weeble portfolio. And even better than that is that if you're a beginner, you don't necessarily have to start trading with your real money. You don't have to invest with your own money. You can just deposit $100 into this account, get your free bonuses, get your two free stocks valued up to $1,400, and then you can do paper trading over here, which is one excellent thing that I wish I had when when I first started so I don't have to lose so much money in the crypto. I lost like thousands in the crypto and also in the MJ sector. So yeah, that's my little backstory. And I hope that by me making this mistake, you don't have to make the same mistake. So I know that was a lot to digest. There was like probably an information overload or like, oh dang, she did like so much with her portfolio. But honestly, I think ultimately investing, there isn't like one single right answer. I know different people just like doing different things. Some people like day trading, some people people like dividend investing, some people like growth investing. There are a million ways to invest, a million ways to make money. And I was just talking to one of my one-on-one -on -one clients and he was really confused about what he should do with making more streams of income, making more money basically. And he mentioned like multiple things like e-commerce, Amazon FBA. And honestly, I feel like Yes, there are many ways to make money. And without a doubt, of course, some of these ways can make money. Some people fail at Shopify. Some people succeed at Shopify. I mean, people can fail and succeed at everything. Even MLMs, people can fail and succeed. But it really comes down to what fits with your personality more. Because 
you really have to understand what you're good at, what you're comfortable with, what is your personality. Let's say if you really like trading and you really like looking at the market 24 seven, then maybe you, you are a day trader or you should be a day trader because you like looking at the market 24 seven, you like paying close attention, you like looking at different stocks, you like taking the gambles, you like the uh, adrenaline, <laughs> you like the adrenaline rush. Like if you like these things, of course, yeah, sure. Day trading might be the thing for you, but my personality doesn't work with day trading because I don't like looking at the markets every single day. I don't like to worry myself along with the ups and downs of the market. I like to be able to live off of passive income, which is with my dividend income, um, and so that is why I like dividend investing and I feel like there are a million and one ways to make money Yes, but not all of them will work for you personally There are overarching themes within all the money making skills of course for example persuasion negotiation These skills are transferable to different money making opportunities, but then for things like maybe you're looking at the stock market, maybe it's more limited and more narrow. So it just all comes down to understanding yourself. And when I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I make sure to really understand my client. I make sure to really understand his or her personality. And I realized this is the first time that I really mentioned it in my video that I do one-on-one -on -one service. And so I'm just gonna mention it briefly. I have the link in the info box for a free 30 minute call for us to see if we're like the right fit to for me to understand your situation. So if you want to sign up and get a free 30 minute call with me, just fill out your info in the link below and I will see you in my dividend investing journey video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this.